everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now today our quest setter came to us from Ethan in Costa Mesa, California. And Ethan wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious what happens at a garbage center? How do they sort through all the trash? I'm counting on you, Joel. Well, Ethan, I'm not going to let you down. We've made our way up here to San Jose, California at one of the most unique and state-of-the-art facilities in the U.S. Why is it so unique? Let's find out on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. What is a murph? A murph? I think it's a fuzzy little creature. Person who does mean things to others. Uh, I'm gonna guess and say an animal. Chocolate. Something small. You're thinking of a smurf. Something big. I'm sure it's something. All right, so I'm here with Emily from Green Waste. Now, Emily, start off by telling us, what is a MRF? A uh, MRF is a material recovery facility. So it's a facility where garbage and recyclable materials are processed. Now, you do both here at this facility? Yes, we do recyclable materials and we also process garbage. It's one of the most unique facilities in the country where we're actually running the MSW, also known as Municipal Solid Waste, through the material recovery facility and pulling out new recyclables folks forgot to put in their recycle bin <laughs> and also processing the organic materials from that that garbage as well. Uh, I said earlier it's one of the most unique facilities. You yeah. just said it's one of the most unique facilities. Is this not in every city, in every town, that this type of uh, a pro processing place? Yeah, unfortunately it's not the common thing to actually process garbage. Um, when materials are picked up curbside by most haulers, that material is transported directly to a landfill. And there's a lot of good material still left in there, a lot of material that has value. And what we do is we, we really try to get people to increase what's called diversion, diversion from landfills. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that 70% of waste is recyclable, but people only recycle about 30% of it? So when people throw in the trash, they think it's trash. Correct. You're going to make it recyclable. Exactly. So a lot of people, so 75% of what people are throwing away is actually recyclable or recoverable. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Now, let's make it clear, though, because now a lot of people are going to be standing over the trash cans going, do I throw it away or not? Yeah. This facility is so unique because you're able to separate everything out. Correct. The city of San Jose is very fortunate because whatever they throw away actually gets processed in this facility. But if your garbage doesn't come to this facility, then it probably is going directly to a landfill. What we're hoping is that this model of processing garbage becomes the model for how we handle trash throughout the country. Wow. And, that, and again, that's what makes this so unique. Exactly. This isn't in every city at this point. Correct. Or it's just here. any city yep. at this point. Wow. Okay. So the trash is going that way. The recyclables are going that way. Yep. And you said something a minute ago, which I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around. People, humans, are going to be sorting through the trash. Exactly. <laughs> this is gross. I'm looking at some of the stuff coming. I mean, it's trash, right? It's garbage. Yep. Diapers. So this is where the human hands first get on it. Exactly. So this is the material as it first comes into the facility. And then we have five different sort stations for folks touching these materials. So the first station is for bona fide garbage. When we know it's garbage and we know we can't do anything with it, the first guy pulls that material off the line. The second guy, this is all yard trimmings, yard waste. So this little bundle here is going to go 
that right there. What is trash? Dirt. Like to throw away or something you don't want. Um, dirty, unclean things. Um, like a banana pill or a used soda can or anything that you eat in or throwing away. Something that somebody eats and they throw away after they eat it. It's just things that are not recyclable and not compostable. I don't think we'd actually define that. I like that. That's our definition, by the way. Don't, don't look it up in a dictionary and say, no, Emily said it's... <laughs> I like that. That's yep. good. So when I say this is the trash line, wow. what I mean is that this is the material that the residents put in the trash. That we all think is trash. Exactly. It doesn't mean it's actually trash. What? That's just the container that it arrived in. I feel like I'm in the way because I keep getting hitting with my branches. If you happen to be next to the branch, the, the yard trimmings yeah. bunker. So below us, you see that they continue to throw things in there, but it's not actually piling up. Yeah. There's about a 20-foot drop down here. Yeah. And what happens is we have a container down there, and when that container gets filled up, we remove the container, replace it with another container. Oh, okay. And then fill that next container up. Okay. I'm, I'm sitting here, I'm wrapping my head around all this recyclables, and you have a recycle line, you have a trash line. What was the main reason you guys built this facility? The main reason that we built it is we saw a lot of things that were getting thrown away that didn't need to get thrown away. See? So we've worked with the city of San Jose, We've worked with their what's called a multi-family housing program. And of course you have an acronym for that, right? <laughs> MFD, multi-family dwelling. There you go. Um, and, and we've worked with the city of San Jose. So multi-family dwelling is something like an apartment complex um, where there are multiple units in one particular area. So sometimes they have trash carts, recyclable carts. Sometimes they have dumpsters. So we've partnered with them and we take all of the garbage from every multi-family dwelling in the city of San Jose. So if you live in San Jose and you live in an apartment complex, this is your garbage. Voila. Now, this is a problem across the U.S., right? Correct. This isn't just in San Jose. That's right. But as you said earlier, you're hoping that this will be the shiny example for all the other communities across the U.S. Yep. And one of the challenges, one of the reasons that that has not happened yet yeah. is because it's cheaper to send it to the landfill. So right now, it's more expensive to do this. It's more expensive to process the garbage, even though we're able to recover recyclable materials from it. Wow. It's still more expensive. All right, so we continue on down the sort line? Absolutely. Please get me out of this trash. <laughs> Here's your fun fact. Did you know that Americans throw away 25 million bo plastic bottles every hour? So after the material first comes into the facility, it goes through all of the sorting stations. During the sorting stations, we pull out anything that we know is garbage, yeah. like shoes and CDs and things that we don't currently have a market for. We also pull out yard trimmings, we pull out metal, and we also pull out rigid plastics. So then the material, a lot of it is still in enclosed bags. So when people take their trash out, they typically put it in a bag, tie a knot, and put it in their container. Sure. Well, we don't want our sorters actually breaking open those bags because we don't know what's inside those bags. So what we have is a state-of-the-art bag breaker here. So the material comes through a conveyor, and we have two cylinders with spikes that rotate at different speeds, and it rips open the bags. And once the bags are ripped open, the material can continue on to the next step. Oh, okay. So I noticed that up there, all the bags, nobody was touching the bags. Exactly, exactly. We just let them go by because the safety of our workers is very, very important. So once it makes its way from here, where is it going? It goes to what's called a trommel. A trommel? Yep. What is a trommel? Um, I think it's a type of mold, um, an instrument. Uh, trumpet? Couldn't it be like a like gardening tool or something? I don't know, like a tool to use? So this is trash coming out? It is trash coming out of the trommel. So when the material goes through the trommel, it gets beat up as it goes along. So things break up, things that used to be stuck together become broken apart. The organic material, the wet stuff, the food scraps, all of that has now been taken out of the garbage. Okay. So what we have here is kind of cleaned garbage. So it starts to look more like recyclable materials. You know, Emily, that's an oxymoron, right? Yeah, absolutely. Clean garbage. Yep. Now, I still 
see what I know as trash on this lawn, plastic bags, but you're saying that's still usable or reusable material. Correct, once we're able to sort it out again. This is a big facility. It is, it is. And so we're going that way. We are. All Let's right. Go. All right, so what are we looking at here? What we're looking at is all of the containers and bottles that fell back off the polishing screen are coming across this conveyor belt, and what you're hearing is a burst of air. Now and I'm what here? that burst of air is doing is actually separating out clear plastic from the rest of the materials. And the way that it does that is through a light beam. So as the material comes over the conveyor, we shoot a light beam through, and if the light goes all the way through, then we shoot a burst of air down that pushes that clear down into a separate area so that we can have clear plastic containers separated from the rest of the container. Wow! Now, when you say clear, you mean transparent. Like, exactly. Right there. Okay. Exactly. So things like water bottles, mainly. This is moving so fast, and that noise is consistent. Yep. Stop. Well, I say that it stops. Right, of course. Yeah. But when you have, like, a large amount come through, it's like... Yep, exactly. Pretty exactly. Cool. Wow. So, which way are we going? Are we following the clear? Or are we following? We're following the rest of the material as it goes over. All right, so what we have here, Joel, is the everything else. So, everything that just continued on from the optical sorter ends up on this conveyor. And what we have is we have manual sorters that are going to separate out two things. They're going to separate out, you hear commonly, recyclables numbers two through seven. Right. And all of the recyclables numbers two through seven are going to be hand sorted off. So, Emily, is this the end? So this is the end of the line for the garbage line. And what this is, is this is all the lightweight stuff that traveled over the polishing screen. Okay, so... So this is all the paper, the plastic bags, the lightweight stuff. Trash? Yes. This is the trash? No, this is going out to compost. This is from the trash, things that got thrown in the trash. But at the end of the line, this is going to end up down at our composting facility at Z-Best. Okay. Even so a lot of this stuff, it may not look like it's compostable. Yeah. Right? Uh, but if you actually look by weight, there's a lot of plastic bags in here. Yeah. But the majority of this stuff is actually organic material that we're able to turn into compost. Paper. Yep. Cardboard. Yep. Some food scraps. I see some leaves. Yep. What about, I see he just took off clothing. I guess yep. that answers my question. Yep. And clothing is garbage. Okay. And True, right true now, garbage. We, correct. Right now, we don't have a market for textiles. Okay. So we have been looking in and exploring being able to compost textiles, but right now we can't actually put our textiles together, clothes and shoes and belts and that sort of thing, and actually do anything with them. So ultimately, right now, they end up as garbage. So what should you do with all your old clothing, shoes, textiles at home? We give it to charity. Give it to little kids. Um, probably give it to Goodwill or give it to your little brother, sister, or cousin. I don't know, keep them. Sell it to the needy. And give it to Goodwill. You should donate them. There you go, yep. simply said, donate And that them. way they can be reused rather than recycled. Because if you don't donate them, guess where they're gonna go? Into the garbage. Which is gonna go into the? Landfill. Nobody likes that. No, it's not where you want to put the material. No. All right, so, oh, and it stopped. So where do we go? Um, we are going to continue on, and we can see the end of the process where some of the materials are bailed. And then lunch? Yep. Let's go. Now, what, what, what's all these bunkers here behind me? So behind us, we have the, the end of the line, really the end of the line for the garbage as well as for recyclable materials. So the material that's actually falling down into these bunkers is being sorted off the paper sort line. So this is all, this is all mixed paper right here? right here, believe it or not, is compostable. So this is the end of the garbage line. It certainly doesn't look compostable. <laughs> no. It looks like it's a lot of plastics. Right. And we'll see when we go down to Z-Best, we'll see that actually most of this is compostable, especially by weight. OK, 
Okay, so, because I'm not sure that people out there, some, some, some people are going, what is compostable? Right. So, you answer first. To give away. Compostable means recycle? Who comes up with that? Um, to, fro to recycle. Act in front of somebody and not act, right? Now you, what is compostable? Compostable means that we can put it into an environment where we're able to convert it from paper, for example, back to soil, or from fruit and vegetables back to soil. So at the next facility, you'll be able to see where we take this material, combine it with other material, and compost it and ultimately sell it as soil for landscapers and for agricultural uses. So it's paper and organics? Yep. Okay. Yep. So right. really the only thing that's a waste product in here is the plastic bags. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's dirty in here. It is. All right, now what about over here? What's in this big bin that I can't see? Cardboard. Oh, okay. So what you have behind you as well is you have cardboard that's coming in and then it gets put onto a walking floor before it gets bailed. Hey, the cardboard's coming at me. Yes, the cardboard's coming out quickly. Oh, look at that. I was walking towards it, and it was coming towards me. Right. Am I standing? So if you look down, there's actually a, uh, what's called a walking floor on the bottom oh, yeah. here. So the material is, is coming out, and then it's going to be carried off to our right. Yep. And okay. then we have more quality control people oh, my who are going to pull out anything that's not cardboard. All right, so that's obviously where all the wood and the yard trimmings go. Yep. Cardboard, what's in here? Um, that's rigid plastic. So things like broken toys, for example. Whoa, whoa, okay, wait, wait. Where, what happened to all the broken toys out there? Throw them away. Um, you can either fix them or give them to Goodwill or throw them in the trash. They get thrown away because they don't work. Well, hopefully the broken toys either get reused and fixed or recycled. And if they get recycled, they would come to this facility and be combined with things like plastic swimming pools or uh, five-gallon buckets and kids' toys, and they all get put together. They're called rigid plastics. They would get bailed, and we sell those bales of plastics. They're then recycled and, believe it or not, turned back into kids' toys and sent back for our use. All right, so Emily, what is this? The one right behind you, Joel, is garbage. This is legitimate garbage. Oh, come on. You keep telling me it's trash, <laughs> not trash. It's real trash. Yep, this is the very small portion of materials that come into our facility that are actual trash, and these are the only materials that get sent out to the landfill. But let's, this is all going to the landfill. Correct. But let's put this in perspective here. About how many tons have you guys processed already today? 120 tons. 120, that is, that's like a lot of trucks. It is, it is. Truck after truck after truck. Mm -hmm. And this will all fit in one truck, right? Maybe two trucks? Probably one truck. So a lot of trucks have come in here mm -hmm. today, a lot. This garbage isn't even ready to leave the facility yet. We don't have enough to take it out of our facility yet. I, I guess with the, putting into perspective, people are bringing you trash that used to go in the landfill. Correct. I mean, all of these, everything's being uh, tipped on the tipping floor right now, mm -hmm. used to go directly to the landfill. Correct. And in most other cities, it goes to the landfill. Yep. But here, this is what you're pulling out sending to the landfill. Exactly. So just less than 25% of all the garbage that comes into our facility goes to a landfill. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that the average person generates 4.5 pounds of trash every day? All right, we are high above the city of San Jose, and I'm here with Michelle from the city of San Jose. Now, Michelle, one of the things that I'm really curious about is how do you balance teaching and enforcing the community about recycling, and yet you have this state-of-the-art facility that you know, really does the recycling for them? With our multifamily program, we find ourselves in the same problem that most cities across the United States are in, which is a fairly low recycling rate. Um, the turnover rate is very high, there's multiple languages spoken, space is tight in apartments, so it makes the recycling process a little trickier for those folks. So we were looking for innovative solutions, and with our private partners, we were able to explore a situation like the MRF that you saw as a way of addressing that and getting 
getting more recyclables as well as the organics like the food waste out of the garbage cans so that they wouldn't go to the landfill. So you're not in any way, and this is one of the things that I was talking to Emily at, with uh, Green Waste, but you're not in any way telling people, oh, you know what, we have this state-of-the-art facility, put all your trash and your recycles in one bin. We want to catch the recyclables up front before they go to a sort line like you saw. Yeah. The materials are cleaner, it's less expensive for the rate payers, so that's a great thing. Yeah. And um, we're going to capture more of the materials there in a cleaner state so that more of your cans can be made back into cans. Your glass doesn't get broken and it can be made into more glass. So we really want residents to recycle on the front end so that we don't have to use um, a facility like you saw. But having said that, we're excited to have that as an opportunity to really capture that and bring San Jose to zero waste, which is our goal. Alright, so I'm here with Greg from ZBest. So we processed all the trash and we pulled out some organics for you. What are you going to do with all these organics? Well, that truck's going to come in, go across our scales. Since we already saw the material being processed, it's ready to go as soon as it hits ZBest. We're going to send that truck directly out to the bagging machine where it's uh, the red machine you see there is going to put it into a 300 foot long bag wow. and lay aeration pipes down in the bottom as it goes. Now, now why would you put it in the bag? What, what does the bag do to, to the material? Well, the bag serves a couple of purposes. Uh, because there's food scraps and, and things like that in the material, uh, we want to keep the flies and birds away from it. And we also want to contain any liquids that might drain out of the, out of the material and, and keep it from, from releasing onto the ground. Uh, first of all, how long will you keep it in the bags? That's going to stay in the bags for 14 weeks. Wow. And that lets the microbes do their job. And after 14 weeks, we're going to open up the bag and take it to our screening process. And then we're going to screen out the finished product. It'll go back into the soil. So when it goes into the bag, that's almost four months. When it goes into the bag, it looks like the stuff we pulled out of the line earlier today. <laughs> it looks like food and grass clippings and whatnot. When it comes out of the bag, it doesn't quite look like that. It doesn't look like that. But you will see some things that you saw before. All the plastic and things that don't degrade are still going to be right there in the pile. But mixed around them, then you're going to see the dark material. And that's all the organics that decompose. And those organics are our compost. So we can screen the plastic and the non-organic fraction right out. And then we're left with the compost, the dark stuff, the good, rich soil amendment, which will go back into the ground. So not only nitrogen and carbon and th words you're used to hearing, but there's potassium and, and you know, dozens of minerals and elements in here, as well as an, an active microbe community. All these things benefit the soil. All right, so you're talking nitrates and potassium and all those other elements here. What you're trying to say is that this is really good stuff for the environment, right? Right, we need to get this stuff back in the soil. Okay, so that, that's great. We, we took all of the trash that the community brought in here uh, around the San Jose area. Correct. We processed it, pulled out all the organics, food and, and everything else, and paper, and now you guys turn this into usable, healthy, environmentally friendly soil. That's correct, and all we need is for the public out there to take this material, put it back in their gardens and their landscaping. Did you hear that? All right, well, cool. Here, I'll let you hold that. There you go. I want to thank Greg, I want to thank Emily, and I want to thank everyone out here for showing us how this full circle process of trash to this amazing pile of organic compost. And I especially want to thank you, Ethan, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something that you're wondering about, please let me hear from you. Go to curiositychquest.org, click on the send us on a quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And who knows, it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. Now remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Ethan in Costa Mesa, California. And Ethan wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious. What happens at a garbage center? What? Well, we're at one of the most unique trash facilities in the. Oh, you didn't say action. All right, so we are high above the city of San Jose, and I'm here with Michelle from the city of San Jose. Now, Michelle, think. <laughs> You've been hanging out with me, it's a bad thing. If you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositychquest.org. The cost is $19.95.